<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome back for some more Let's Play Kagetsutoya. We, we were probably at the finale, honestly. If I'm, like, looking at things from a literal standpoint. Many parts got cut after the planning stage. Base would be the Satsuki scenario next to the characters' H scenes. Even though there was a lot of crying about the cuts, we think it turned out clean and tidy. More like clean and titty, am I right? Because, okay. Um, so this part, we actually have a lot of stuff. Whoa. Wait, is, that, is she saying that? Wait, is that? No, it's the same as before. So we gotta go to Jukebox. And then we exit, which is so weird. But now we have the scene select. So here's the thing. There's a lot of scenes in this game. There's a lot. And for the most part, I recognize a lot of these and can go like, like, yeah, you know, I see, I, I know some of these that I, I did. So if I click on one, okay, does it actually not, hey, wait, is this actually a new scene? Did I accidentally click on one? No, let's see here. Wait, so if I click on this one again, oh, shoot. Are you saying I accidentally clicked on one that I didn't read? I'll drop at the courtyard. Maybe I'll meet that child again. Wow, I just accidentally clicked on a new one. As expected, the air of the courtyard is refreshing. One might call it morning tranquility. Since most students go straight into the main building from the gate, there's usually no one in the air courtyard. Space is solitude. The courtyard looks serene as usual, but it lacks the presence of the child. Why are you saying that? That's strange. What am I doing here? I shake my head at my own worthless action. I can't help the child by coming to this place. That place. If I don't meet that child in the dark forest, it won't do. Okay, so we got... We got a lot we actually have to go through then, huh? So yeah, if I go to like... This one. Okay, so yeah, skip. Cool. So this will actually let me see which ones to skip and which ones to not. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through all of these. You heard me right. I'm gonna go through all of these. And whichever ones I've never seen... Will do. Oh boy, is it gonna be a lot? Absolutely. But, uh, you know, I think I'll skip the ones that I know I did, like Inuit 2. You know, did we make the sign? We made the sign. Right, the black cat in the courtyard, we saw that. We go to next. Uh, tea time with Arkuid. Skip. Okay, good. And it keeps me there. Good. All right, so yeah, I think I'll just skip ahead till I get to all the ones that I haven't done. Oh, here's one. No, there's something I must check up on. There's a lunchtime one. Sorry, I need to do something in the courtyard. I'll have to eat alone. Uh, I don't care, but what's the matter? You don't look well. Really? Well, sorry, Arhiko. I just feel that way. <sighs> well, if you say so. He trudges outside. A lot of courtyard ones. I go to the courtyard. The sunlight is adequately warm and the wind is nice, too. Perfect weather for a picnic. If I lie down here, then maybe that child will come from the grass. Or not. Well, she went to end it with him. Oh, it's I missed a lot of stuff around that time, huh? It's a losing bet. She went to her death. How foolish. Huh? I get mad at myself, who knows this, but it's just lying here. Soon the dream will end. Before that, I'll at least have to try to help her. Oh yeah, I probably missed a ton of stuff about going certain places then, huh? Okay. Oh, here's a new one. So... We didn't, we, this is the night one for End of the World 1, which we never got because we immediately went to End of the World 2 for the fact that we immediately saw the end of the world. All of a sudden, I remember the hill lit by the sunset. Sunset that made it feel like it were the end. It's far away from here, but that place where the sun sets must be the end of the world. Sunset that can bring about such nostalgic old memories. When did I see it? Today or yesterday? I can't even remember as sleep tries to overcome me. I suppose that's only normal. Throughout today, I couldn't remember yesterday at all. And if I sleep, today becomes yesterday. Right. There isn't a reason I... There isn't a reason I can't remember. Or I can remember. Tomorrow, I'll just forget about today. Hoping to fall asleep, I count sheep. One sheep, two sheep, three sheep, four sheep. I, that doesn't work. That doesn't work for me. But white sheep don't appear and... Oh. A strangely familiar black cat sits on the chair alone. Interesting. Yeah, we never saw that. 
because we saw most of the end of the world starting from the second because we saw it there, right? Something forgotten one. Something forgotten two. So these are all the night ones. Something forgotten three. We did the cat mods. So these are all the night ones, right? Yeah. We saw that. Okay. Well, time to look for the next one. Oh. Well, since everyone's so busy, I'll go rest in my room for now. This is a resting in the room one. I open the door and enter. I've gotten used to this never-changing room. No, I'm wrong. Other times when I come, I can meet her. But she's already gone from Tonoshiki's world. A world not... Oh, so there's so many about her being gone. Wow, a world not shared by Tonoshiki. If I don't go to that unreachable place... So whenever it's no one, it's always that... It, yeah, all the no ones there are, are, are interesting. Whirlwind of death... Okay. Okay, here's another without anyone. Yeah, so the weather out is, uh, outside is so nice. It'd be a waste not sunbathe in such weather. Since I'm not healthy, I should at least do a little to look after my body. By which you mean you're just gonna sit there and do nothing. That's not super healthy, but sure. The sun glares in my eyes. Sitting on the chair, I look below the table for that child. She's not there. This courtyard is her nest. If she's not here, then that means she's not anywhere. What am I doing? If you know that much, you must hurry. That place, the most nostalgic yet reluctant place for me when I was Nanaya Shiki. It's so interesting how many there are that literally force you to go to where you have to go, and yet, because I went there, I just don't do them, right? So, most of these choice ones I'm not too worried about. Right, because they're just the, the, the ones that give you the choices. Oh, here's a new one. Afternoon Main Street, Nanaya. I go to the main road. It's just past lunchtime. The liveliness of the streets will begin to glow. All right, then what shall I do now? There's some place to go that makes my head spin. Indeed, maybe following tradition, I'll visit a game center. Hold on. In the crowd just now was something that should not have been there. That person. That feeling of my heart being put in a blender. My rhythmically beating heart pants and feels claustrophobic inside the plastic casing. This is impossible. But it wasn't my eyes hallucinating. There's no way I can mistake his form. Wait. My legs start moving. He looks and recognizes me. After recognizing me, he leads me on. <sighs> my mouth turns into a twisted shape. Alright, if he leads me on, then I'll accept without refusing. He laughs disturbingly and slides into the alleyway. Uh, it's indeed like that. There's only one reason he would appear, and since it's like that, there's only one place that would be suitable. Well then... Let's continue what we couldn't finish, killer. He stares this way. The extremely chilling shape thirsting for blood. I definitely won't become like him. I wonder how that'll work out, he laughs. He's reading my thoughts. Your fear is always looking forward to reviving itself. As long as I live. You. Knife. It's in my pocket. I grab it. He also grabs his knife in reverse. Then what afterwards, Tonoshiki? Afterwards? Afterwards? What's he talking about? As long as he wields the knife, the only thing to do is to bring down the enemy. There's nothing more to prepare. 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 What? Wait. Just now, what was that unnatural line? What am I forgetting? Really? If you're not in your world, you can't exert your presence. What is he talking about? I feel nauseous. A headache follows. Anemia again. Ah, uh, how did I forget? This body is so close to death in the form of death so repugnant. Is time up in this place too? I must defeat you before the world collapses totally. If you consider me a killer as well, then call me out to a suitable place. Oh, that was him. I'll wait for you in the world of shadows. He suddenly disappears. And with that... I'll take off my glasses. Like watercolor paint melting, the alley melts. Ah! This is a dead end, too. 
There's nothing in front. Uh, it's a dead end physically, but it's also dead end in another sense. There's no more time. In essence, here's the end of the world as well. If I don't snap out of it, I'll be caught in the end of the day. And we're fine. And it's almost evening. Ah, oh, that was fun. I feel like a relaxed enough to last me a year. It's good to roam the streets freely alone sometimes. I went to the game center, then explored a bookstore I like, and shopped around a clothing store to scout out what I need for winter, sunbathe, and parking, and to end it all, I went to the tea store to look over the books I bought today. Huh? What did I buy books? Ah! And in addition, I thought there was something unmistakable that happened before I went to the game center. Well, it's alright. If I can't remember, it can't be too important. But before that, the most pressing problem of the moment is dinner. If I don't start heading back to the mansion, then I might not get any. I think we had a similar scene without him. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Oh, here's another new one. I didn't see its title. Shoot. Not here. I thought we could meet when I came here. Oh, this is another looking for the child one, but that child is not here. Maybe I can't ever find that black coat in this world again. This isn't the time to be saying such things. Without a moment's delay, I must go to that place to put an end to him. Short and sweet. All right. Intersection conversation. Okay, we did that one. Okay, so this is Arkwid's room, a date. Right, since it's evening, Arkwid should be up by now. This is new. Oh, cute! Welcome, Shiki. I had a feeling you would come soon. Arkwid is holding a black cat. For a moment, my focus is on the cat. Arkwid, that black cat, I point. And at that moment, the cat purrs, escapes from Arkwid's hands, and jumps out the window. Really, she escaped because you pointed. Cats don't like eye contact or pointing from a stranger. Oh, I guess it was my fault. Hm. Don't be so depressed. That child doesn't really follow me either. With that, she ends the discussion on cats. So, didn't you have something to say? Ah, uh, no. I didn't come with a specific goal in mind. It's not that, but now I think about it. Okay, now that I think about it. Okay, so black cat. We did that one, talking about the black cat. Yesterday? Okay, there's something I wanted to ask. And someone from whom I want to hear the answer. Arquid, I need to ask a trivial thing. Hmm? What is it? That's... Can you tell me what I did yesterday? Ah, her happy face quickly turns grim. I get the feeling that whoever gets asked this question reacts the same way as Arquid did just now. Wait, Shiki, you can remember yesterday? Yeah, it's embarrassing, but I can't remember it. So, I was wondering if you could be so kind to tell me what happened. Um, you seem serious, Shiki. What's with that attitude? You really seem upset and disappointed. Of course. You were walking with me at night, got rid of Seal who jumped us, and... Don't tell me you don't remember the promise we made when we parted. Uh, Arkwood looks really angry. But I can't even remember if I made a promise to Arkwood yesterday. No, I'm not making a fool of you. Not only yesterday, but I can't even remember the day before. It's quite troubling. You can't remember the day before yesterday? Uh, I'm done for. I think I've just poured oil on a burning house. But then all of a sudden, she smiles again. Great. Thanks for understanding my situation. Huh. I'm surprised at myself, too. I think I've gotten more patient. Uh, she's not listening to me. But I can't let this one go. Shiki, go outside and cool your head for a moment. Ugh, what's this? Can we that she's kicking me out? I thought I would never hear such a thing from Arkwin. Her eyes tell me to hurry up and that pressure alone is enough to drive me to the kitchen. Or she's controlling me with her mystic eyes. One of those two. Then goodbye, okay? Don't show your face in front of me until you remember yesterday. If you don't keep this promise, then I'll really be mad, Shiki. Slam! The door closes. She... I... I wouldn't even ask if I could remember it on my own. 
Uh, I start walking as I sigh. I don't know what will happen if I linger in front of her house too long, so I should probably head back to the mansion. Huh. Dang. That's... What about the killer? The things that I want to ask Arkwood usually turn out to concern the occult. Since there's a killer out on the streets, I guess it wouldn't, won't be too hard to think of questions to ask. Arkwood, you know about the killings that have been happening, right? What do you think about them? What do you mean, what do I think about them? I don't know anything about that. I've not been keeping up with the news. What? Now, now I think about it, that's not abnormal? Without Ro or Nero, Arkwood is not required to do her best to gather intelligence. No, before that, what did I hear that? Hey, you're a true ancestor hunting vampires. Then do something about this too. Could be something left over by Roa. You need to stop thinking that all of these weird happenings are our fault first. <laughs> Most of the leftovers are destroyed by Seal the moment they rise up. Uh, even if that's so... My fault, as she said, not everything is related to vampires. <laughs> She's like, you know there's just like human killers too. Like, I'd say a majority of them are. Sorry, I'm not thinking clearly. This isn't good. I think my head is acting weird lately. My memories are blurred and my thoughts aren't clear. I let out a sigh. Um, it's good that you understand, but does your head hurt a lot? It doesn't hurt. It's not headaches or anemia. My body's actually fine. So fine that I feel like it's been that way all the t this time. Really? Then there's no problem. You're healthy, Arkwood explains happily. W watching that happy face, the doubt I had in my mind clears up. That's it. Are you feeling fine? You're healthy. That's it. And I stay with Arquin until my time to return the mansion comes. I say goodbye and head out. Dang, we really missed a lot with her, huh? Alright, uh, what about a date V2? We did, so we did that date. Okay, we missed the first one. So we'll, we'll, we'll skip ahead to the next thing that comes up. Okay. Uh, this is when we say no to go into her house. It's a little rude to go in when she's not here. See all that is. Uh, the key should be on top of the mailbox. I go down the stairs and go to the mailbox. There are so many apartments like this around this area that it seems to form a city of its own. Seal Senpai's apartment is building 2 Unit C. Let's see. Yeah, here's the mailbox for 2C. I'll the mailbox to find the key taped inside. I love how so many people do that and it's always a terrible idea. Really, I have to warn her next time I see her. I lock the door and return the key. All right, I'll go back. Since it's early, I'll ask Kohaku san to make me some takoyaki. Nice! Thinking of delicious things, I strengthen my desire to go back to the mansion. I won't do anything stupid and go back quickly. I actually went to a convention once, and we, uh, like it was a small anime convention, very small, tiny. Like 1.000, like 0.000001% of, like, anime expo. And there we actually had a class on making takoyaki, and I got to make some. It was a lot of fun. So that was pretty cool. So that was nothing. Okay, we'll see what else there is here. Oh, we got a date with CL. Right, even though it's still evening, it's about time for Senpai to come home. The first one, which we missed. You mean the preparations for the cultural festival? Yes, since the day's so close, I'll be home even later than usual. Understood. Maybe it's for the same reason, but I don't even see you in the tea room. Where will you be spending most of your time? With your class or with the student government? Ah, figuring that out will be the joy of the day. Please come visit and watch. Come watch? Does that mean they're putting on a show? Right, there was a rumor that the student government will have exclusive use of the gym for the afternoon. Alright, then what about Tonokun? Your class still hasn't reported what you're doing. Class President Mr. Shin gave me a list of three possibilities for Class 2C. I nah, don't worry about that. Our class will be doing one of those three. They decided to prepare for each of them and then decide on which to do the day before. <laughs> Seems really hectic in your class, Tonokun. Yes, the boys and the girls don't get along too well, so the votes were split three ways. So we decided to choose one on the day right before. Hmm. We're having a heated discussion about it now. Uh, Tonokun, is it okay for you to be here then? I think we've actually seen this one too. It's okay, since I'm totally in the middle, I'll just do my best whatever they decide. Uh, she lets out a sigh of relief. Yeah, I think we did see this one. 
or at least one very similar, because it is V1. And just when the tea club meeting between the two of us was about to end. So, Tonokun, what did you come here to ask? Yeah, this, this is where we go to ask there. I don't have much to ask. You're lying. You came here, even giving up your precious vote, so there must be something urgent you need to ask. Even though you might not realize it yourself. Her serious expression makes an impression. Now that I hear it, I definitely am overflowing with questions that need to be asked. There's so many uncertainties I was forgetting about. Something that I couldn't solve myself. Right, that's... So yeah, let's see if, if there's any of these that we haven't done. Uh, the killer, yeah. The killer who appears on the streets. Even though the attacks by vampires have stopped, why are there still murders happening in town? That's not something I can ask Senpai, but... How are the night patrols nowadays? Nowadays. <laughs> there have been attacks recently, and I was wondering if they had been the doing of vampires, too. Tonokun, what are you trying to say? That's... There are attacks at night, and many fell victim to them. You patrol during the night, so I was thinking maybe you knew more about the matter. Senpai looks at me seriously for a moment. I don't know anything about what you're talking about. There definitely are some dead hiding somewhere, but no murders were committed by them. Excuse me, but could that just be usual crime? Senpai says apologetically. If she replies like that, then I have nothing to say either. If Senpai, who patrols every night, doesn't know about that, then it's highly likely that the serial murders are done by a normal human being. Is that so? Well, this isn't good. Whenever something bad happens, I have a habit of automatically blaming vampires. It can't be helped. You were a victim as well, until just recently. You're regular students, so it'll take some time to get normal again. Get normal. It is as Senpai says. I can't get depressed all the time by such horrific memories. Right. I think I've become too sensitive to the word serial murder without intending it. Ah, uh, those attacks are murders? Yeah. It's on the news and many people talk about it and... and... That's strange. If it's as big a news item as you made it out to be, then I would have heard of it too. Tonokun, could it be that you learned of it today? Ah, uh, could it be? Could have been yesterday. Answering like that, I realize again how fuzzy my memory is. I can't even tell where I gained certain knowledge. It's unsettling either way, Tonokun. Please don't go out alone at night. I don't know why, but I feel that it's somehow related to you. Right, right. Uh, my body tells me so. I have jokingly say that as I bring the teacup to my lips. Because of the long conversation, the tea is already cold. Oh, there's nothing worse than cold tea. There's straight up nothing worse than cold tea. I mean, uh, unless you add, like, ice to it, right? Then if you add ice to it, it's nice. You can enjoy that, but not, not if it's just previously hot, now cold. And so an evening with Seal Senpai passes by quick, quietly. The time to return to the mansion comes, and I bid her farewell until tomorrow and leave her apartment. So I bet you all the ones here are going to be... They're going to be ones I haven't seen, right? Because that was the killer. What about school? No, we've seen the school. What about yesterday? We talked to her about yesterday. Okay. A date V2? Yeah, so we saw that one. Okay. Flower of Requiem. What is this? I'll check out the alleyway. What is Flower of Requiem? I arrive. It's been a while since I last came here. After that incident, I've been avoiding this place. There are so many things left here. Blood, darkness, pain of death, memories of countless deaths of living beings. Those and another. A promise I made with my hands still waiting to be fulfilled. I'm holding a bouquet of flowers. Oh. Oh, this is for Satsuki. This is for Yumizuka. Flowers of Offering, Camellia. Why did I bring it here? For whom did I bring it? I don't know myself, but I offer them in silence. Oh, I didn't even put that together. I leave the alleyway. Could it be because I came here around the time of sunset? Behind my closed eyes, behind the crimson red hill road, a familiar nostalgic face and a promise with a classmate that could not be fulfilled. Oh, wow. I didn't even put together that that'd be that scene. The justification? Okay, we did that one. Interesting. Wow. Okay, I'm happy I did that. Oh boy, we got all the festival ones now. So, we did most of these. So, we'll, we'll uh, see which ones I might have missed. Okay, so this one's called Thanatos and Eros. 
which obviously means that we're thinking naughty thoughts about them. Hiswin Kohaku, is this an illness? Even though it's me, the strange thought brings a headache. Hisui's not the type to come by herself, and Kohaku's san isn't the type of person to come with Hisui either. The two, although they seem close, are very distant to each other. The relationship between twins. I can't imagine how each thinks of the other who is half of her own self. But if possible, such a thing could happen. If perhaps only they and I are left, there is some chance. There is a chance that something that prevents them will be no more. Well, such a thing. It's a nice dream with just the three of us left. And P. I close my eyes, my sleep is deeper than usual, Tonoshiki dreams a dream that cannot be. So that's where, that's where the Thanatos dream comes in, right, right, right. Okay. All right. Right, and I'm, I, the nice thing is, it very clearly labels the ones for me to avoid. How, how awesome, how quaint, right? I think I did all the, all these, right? Because I jumped to that one, because I'm like, I don't think I've, that one jumped out as new. Okay, that's all there. Okay, end of the world four, imagining the end of the world. The truth behind it is the image of death trying to bring the destruction of the whole world. Why does such a thing exist? Why does the world want to be killed? The answers are already known. That this today is a dream Tonoshiki is dreaming. A dream that child, the black cat, is maintaining for Tonoshiki. There can only be one reason why such a world would end. That is, the person dreaming this dream is dying in the real world, so the world itself is falling into destruction. That male. The person I drew as I willed is acting as the most definitive image of death and is running around the world causing it to die. It's not that the person was killing the world. Rather, Tonoshiki just put an arbitrary form to the destruction that is spreading throughout this world. But then why? Right. I must decide this with the person who represents death. Tonoshiki defeated the person so the destruction of the world must end. But the image of death does not disappear. The world is dying. Tonoshiki isn't dying. The realization of Nightmare spoke. The main character Tonoshiki is an image of someone. In the end, he's nothing more than just a guest actor. Then, this happy dream, whose is it? Interesting, okay, okay. Again, let's check for different ones. This one's called On The Way Chaos, which... Like Nero? All right, I'll go to school alone. Even if I say that Akia goes to Asagami, there's no way we can go to school together. Akia takes the car to the next town. I walk 30 minutes to my school. It's so weird how, again, Schrodinger, she goes to her school or not. After coming down the hill, I pass residential areas and arrive at the main road. During this time, the road which connects to the train station is unbelievably crowded. Morning rush hour seems to be the same everywhere. Everyone trods along busily. And then there's one outsider. The one in the school uniform looking at the road blankly is none other than myself. Not here. I thought I could meet her when I came here. But that girl isn't here. No, maybe. Maybe now I can't see that black coat anywhere in this world. Oh, this is... Oh, wow! If you explore around after she's gone, there's so many things to show that she's gone. It's not the time to be lounging around like this. I have to go to that place at once and duke it out with him. That's like there's so many you'd never see. Unless you specifically go out of your way. Dang, I can't believe we've seen Mansion Dinner. Night Fight Nightmare. Okay, so this is a new one. Garden of Light, End of the Dream. The inner courtyard is flooded with a white light that seems like it could melt everything away. Refreshing scenery of morning. I stretch myself and inhale as much fresh air as my lunch can possibly take. Now there's not a single shadow in this world. A peaceful day where even trace of nightmare and death are gone. In other words, a perfect day of endless happiness, as if it were someone's dream. But, really, can I keep on dreaming such peaceful dreams? In other words, it's a daily routine. A dream is something more grand. If I really were dreaming, then weird development should repeat itself. Ah, even if it's so peaceful, dreams that resemble everyday life cannot be considered precious dreams. I sense footsteps to my back, so I turn around. Below the white morning sunlight that might disappear any moment, the girl in the black coat calmly stands. Hello. Hey, I thought I would meet you if I came here. The girl, without replying, looks at me with blank eyes. She's still not feeling well. Even though the image of death is gone, such emergency treatment cannot save her. Yeah, let's skip all those trivialities. First, I'll speak alone, is that okay? The girl somewhat worriedly nods. 
Thanks. Then I'll ask her straight out, but this is inside a dream, right? Repeating the same day, thinking that I forgot about yesterday's happenings, in reality, it's... Nothing's real, and... Uh, just a garden of models that encompass everything that can happen here. So without the concept of day, anything can happen. It's okay to experience it early, and it's not okay to experience it yet. But distinguishing the night in the morning is probably an attempt to replicate the reality as close as possible. No, I'm not mad. I'm actually thankful. I had a great time here. And I'm certain the others are thinking that too. Whenever they wake up, they probably thought today's dream was happy. Looking at it that way, you're an excellent dream demon. But I still have some complaints. Even though others were briefly called in, for me, the main character, it was a little confusing. I was actually nervous at first, thinking that maybe I'm trapped. Couldn't you have explained a bit? Hmm. I shoot her a look of complaint. Ah, she's perturbed. Perturbed! Okay, okay, since it's a problem if these playful trickeries continue, I have to be mad when I need to be mad. It's okay if you're repenting. Well, it's not like I don't know why you wanted to keep it a secret. I know. I'm the main character of this dream, and that fact is that I, and the fact that I keep on dreaming means that the real Tonoshiki is hurt, right? Ah, uh, so it could simply be like this. I was in an accident, got taken to the hospital, but maybe from the aftermath before, I didn't open my eyes, so the worried Arco had sent you to ensure that my mind doesn't die. Is that correct? Hmm. It's a disturbed silence. I don't know if I got it correct or wrong, but my confidence is dropping. In other words, while the dream Tonoshiki lounges about in the, this world, the Tonoshiki in the real world is undergoing treatment. This is a guess, but isn't my wound already healed? So I'll be out of my dream pretty soon? Her eyes say, oh, so you noticed. Hmm, so even though I'm dense, I had a feeling. And also that you, who had been maintaining the dream up until now, will disappear soon. She looks slightly down. A long silence. But when I'm about to tell her we should keep on meeting with bold eyes. Wake up now. Yes. She says that with emotionless eyes. Alone with unchanging eyes that stare at the scenery far away, she silently says goodbye. I'm sure after hearing that. She doesn't realize it. I can't open my eyes up by myself. Because it's not a dream Tonoshiki is dreaming. The nightmare said that in here everyone's an actor. The reason I was the only leading actor is probably as I said. But I'm not the one who made the dream of such normal days. Such days that one envied could not grasp in his hands. I see. You could not even realize it because... You were lonely all this time. I walk up to approach her. She doesn't run and just looks up. I put my hand on her shoulder and say, No, this isn't my dream. She tilts her head in confusion. Right. It's only natural that this world dies. If Tonoshiki isn't fatally threatened, then there's no reason why this world would be heading toward destruction. There's only one person dying to begin with. And the dream dreamt just before? This is... something you've always been wanting to see. Something so trivial and without consequence. Your own precious dream. It's a normal day a lonely kid kitten saw. Her eyes are not focused. Her lips quake slightly. My dream. Shiver. As if she's afraid, as if she can't believe it. She just repeats that word silently. Certainly, she must have been looking at our lives through Arkwid. Even though she was in pain, she silently looked on. On happiness, joy, and suffering, without even realizing them individually. To talk with someone, to touch someone, to want to do it, even though not realizing what it is. Like a cat that doesn't realize the purpose or meaning of being petted, but still wants to stay that way forever. But for her, there is no such reason. No matter how much she wants it, she just looked on from afar. For a long time, just like her owner did. Although he wanted to look at the world and be alone, at the end, the old man touched her and taught her the concept of warmth. She just stares. The girl just looks at the warmth. Even though it doesn't go inside her, she realizes she's looking at someone's happiness. Such things... I'll forget about them now. I put my knees on the ground and hug her in a friendly way, not a weird way. It's okay now. With strength, but not enough to crush her, I lightly hug her. You were all alone up until now, right? So you can come inside. Tap. I say that as I bring my forehead forward. At first she looks up in surprise. As if it were, as if it, as if it, an old pot were broken. Oh my god, some of this writing. Her tears run down her cheeks. Her frail fingers search its way here. 
After letting a line of tears run down, the girl runs to hug and cling. Thank you. Sound without sound, it is repeated as if a kitten were meowing. Idiot, I'm the one who should be doing that. You helped me until my wounds were healed. So I have to pay you back. It's not too strong, but if I'm okay then... I let go of the girl and I bite my index finger. Drip! Red blood comes out! I want to be your strength. If it's okay, then I'll give you as much as you need. I offer my finger covered in blood. Confused, she looks very uneasy. I know, it's a contract. If Harkwood can't share her strength with you, then I'll form a contract with you. And then she's like, oh, she sighs heavily. She embarrassedly bows her head down. Oh boy, again, and slowly sucks. Oh, we're good! Sucks on the outstretched finger. I take my finger out surprised. Whoa, wait, that was really cold just now. She nods a yes and trods away. After putting some distance to me and herself. Oh, I wonder if this is the version where you turned off the... The H scenes. Is that what this is? Doesn't even give you the choice. She lifts the rim of her skirt and bows courteously. Uh, this seals the contract. She smiles and nods. Okay, then your life won't be put in danger again, right? That must be it. That must be what the V2 is. She nods and looks up at the sky. I see, I see. Okay. Okay, then in that case, this is about the same, right? Yeah. Okay, I see. Okay. Sounds good. I was curious. Let's see what else we have. Oh, this is new already. Homeroom starts to class lively, like on a midsummer day, but feels rather different from the usual studious aura. Ah, uh, now think about it today. Oh, this is just the choice again. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's all them there. We saw the Magus' dreams. The truth? What is the truth? We've seen the truth. Okay, good. Okay. And that's like... That's it. We've seen everything. The only thing that's left is whatever this bonus track is. Because I didn't click it by popular request. Here's a little something extra special. No, this does not include messages used on special days. Try January for- Oh, God. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's fine. Oh, God, it's all of them. The horoscopes, the lucky items. Okay, staff trivia novel. Rare event one. How do you view a rare event? Go to school without meeting anyone. Okay, so that's just tips on that. Character trivia. Character trivia, what do we got? Arquit okay, yeah, we we've done that one there. Okay. I think people said... Okay, it's random, literally just like... Oh, Ch Chobits! I see. Okay. Wait, okay, so yeah, those are just the random ones. Sleepwalking series, the ones... Oh, Tsukihime 2 rumors. In Tsukihime 2 and Motuhime, there are 12 little sisters. Nissan will hold your... Okay, we've seen that one. What, what else do we got? In Tsukihime 2, the Tono Mansion turns into a girl's dorm. Hijinks with love with Hina with hot springs. Look forward to it, really. Is that a love Hina reference? If Tsukihime 2 gets made, enhances his rumor to have a part. He looks like the protagonist of Devil May Cry. Aha, uh -huh, I've heard of this. I've heard of that, and that's amazing. What, what else do we got with Tsukihime Chimia? The first dead apostle CL forgot was... Thought was India's Kari Demarche. But the day before, he said that there's no such dead apostle, so chaos ensued. Now we'd, okay, so he lied. Very cool. Sarah Director's first H game. I've heard of that one, actually. Heard of it, but don't know what it is. The Webmaster, oh yes. Mysterious Letter, okay, yeah, again, that's the child. We don't like that. That's getting a, that's getting a fan translation right now, actually. Promising Satsuki's scenario, Drew has this already completed. Maybe we'll get to see it one day. Again, we, we will see it now, soon. Sound director used to be a vocalist in college. Someday we... Oh, cool. Okay. Was that five? Yeah, that's five. Okay. What else do we got? Six. Scenario director's habit. He likes to make life-altering decisions with rock, paper, scissors, then he loses. Cool, cool, cool. Seven. Uh, B46 son found a plethora of typos and spelling mistakes. Thank you very much. Well, dang. If only they could go through the fan translation. Now direct trick like the theme of a certain celebrity. Give me a song that makes me feel like my brain is melting, asked the webmaster. From that day on, every time you phone... Oh, right, 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 right. I mean, Soccer Wars music is, is a jam. Yeah. Nine. What else we got? Our Hegel, let's go to Maki today. Maki means sword battle, and supposedly it can mean today... Will be without misfortune or fraud. The scenario director once thought that the latter was the accepted use. Okay, so it was a case of. Okay. Oh god, there's so many. Uh, recommended scene, crimson paper relations. Don't know what that means. Cool, cool. 
Uh, favorite character, Tsukihime Soka. That's fair. Why is her name the title? It's so weird. While making Tsukihime the art director's bank account, which had two years of worth of savings, had emptied. Also, the scenario director sold 10 years worth of manga and CD. Wow. He complains his otaku essence is now gone along with his merchandise. Well, dang, now they're stinking rich, probably. What the hearing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Said that they got to choose it. It's so good. It's so good. I like it. But the plus period, since its function was emphasized over everything else, a lot of people said it looked like a textbook. Thinking about it, indeed looks like one. I don't know if I have that book or not. Who was the first one to cosplay Hisui? A type moon saleswoman. Cool. Sick. Many people said the reason for buying it was a saleswoman dressed in the maid uniform. Yeah, that's fair. That's strong. Originally, Sugi and me have said over the course of one... Yeah, we, we saw that one there. 18. Originally, Nier was planned to be only mentioned, not make an appearance. Bow Wow Panic in Tsukihime. Interesting. Originally, Seal Senpai was cute and all the st uh, staff all liked her. Where did we go wrong? She ended up such a sober girl. I mean, we, we like her too, don't worry. Originally, she could be... Oh, yeah, we, okay, so let's now go through the Dead Apostle series. So, these are interesting. Primate Murder. Yes. So, again, it follows Alt Rouge, but apparently... Yeah, he mimics Alt Rouge, which is very interesting. I guess that would explain why Fu can talk, because he can mimic, huh? Number two, the Dark Six, the first dead apostle, the first system, but it hasn't reached 100% completion. What does that mean? What does that mean? Number three, Brunestead of the Crimson Moon, the ultimate one. You're just going to casually use the phrase ultimate one, huh? Dead apostle series, Zelrich, magic user. Again, the fact that he's a... This is so buck wild. We saw that one, and that is crazy. Number five, Ort. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold the frickin' phone. Um. Okay, oh my god, okay. That's... That's FGO right now, huh? Interesting. I wonder how many more I'll be able to recognize. Rizo Wall Strout, Black Knight Strout, possesses the magical sword Near Dark, one of the top three. Because of his curse, he's thought to be invincible, one of Altruge's guards. She Killer's rival in Suki. I forgot about She Killer. No, there is no Suki he made too. Yet. Okay, number seven. Anashi. Yeah, we've heard about Anashi. Kurt Anashi is of the second generation. We've heard about him in uh in uh El Malloy. Finna Blood Svelton, the White Knight, demon of Stratavarius, has a liking for little boys. That's strange, so he sucks only male blood. Sponsor High Class Parade is the captain of a ghost squad. What the heck is that? One of Altruja's gods. I was gonna say if he's he'd probably be paired up with the other one. Was that eight? Yes, that was eight. Okay. I got I gotta remember to stay on which number I am. Nine. What do we got? Okay, Alt Rouge, mix of true ancestor and dead apostle, can be called Arkwood's big sister. Again, I'm so curious about her. Next, Nero Chaos. Refer yeah, just go to Tsukihime. Simple. Stanrobe Colin, the city eater. Big eater, although destroyed by the church's essence, was enough to destroy everything in it. Whoa. But his annoying qualities cannot be matched by any other. Okay. Next one. Only, yeah, 13, Tatari Disaster. Yeah, what does that mean? That's so confusing. 14, Van Femme, one of the top dead apostles, has amazing attention. Isn't this, yeah, this is the one that, um, they're in his, they mention going to his floating casino in, um, Fate's Hollow Ataraxia. Yeah. Yeah, we heard about that. 14 or 15 Rita Rosa N typical high class vampire inherited her master's property does whatever she pleases never satisfied perhaps a fault of her crooked personality is good relationship with Sumere who thinks that when one dies the other will probably be the killer are they really friends okay is that gonna be another one then Sumire okay and that is apparently Grand Serg Blackmore people told me controls nevermore yeah there's some stuff here that relates to other fate stuff right now. 
I don't, how the frick do you pronounce that? Trivim? Whitesmith. Sorry, is that the opposite of a blacksmith? One of the top dead apostles doesn't have a special ability, thinks a vampire doesn't need anything. He should just excel at being a vampire. Noble thinks symbol is best, but considered to be in 17th place. Has the largest property out of all the dead apostles. One most acquainted with modern technology. Strange one. So, uh, 18. Enhance. Avenger. Killed his master and took his place. Sells a lot of human in him. One of the most developed dead apostles. Yeah, because he's just Dante, apparently. All right. Merm Solomon. Usually hunts vampires in his burial agency. Yeah, we've heard about them. And that's supposed to be one of the four legendary beasts, not horses. That's a, that's a typo. Oh, Sumeria. Here we go. Suma Samir lives underwater. Only dead apostle able to teleport in the air, transcends the rules of nature, perhaps a superhuman. A pessimist who does whatever she likes, but also one who can enjoy anything in Suge Amy 2. Rumored to just be a simple drunkard older sister who needlessly gets in the way of the murderer. Huh. Interesting. 27. Kabak Alcatraz, dead apostle of the Thousand Year Lock, a sorcerer who turned dead apostle through research, invented a treasure chest no one can open, but accidentally trapped himself in there too. Comedian of the 27 dead apostles, but his true abilities, well, he's the comedy director, acquainted with Zelrich for a long time. Almost a master. So Is that like where the chest comes from in Hollow Ataraxia? Yes, we did that one, I guess, already. What? Then what was the one above it? What was 19 then? Oh, I think we just did... Wow, they're in not the normal order. 21. EX Makaro Valgam Yong, yeah, yeah. We, 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 know, we know about him. Okay, character quotes, character quotes. Lunacy, these are the weird ones. Do you know Makihisa-san? Okay, yes, that's... That's not one I know. Found translation Easter eggs, that's where the fun is. Okay, now we know. For you jokers out there... Yakety Sacks goes to track 18. Oh, are you saying if we switch track 18 to Yakety Sacks, that'd be perfect? That'd be that, that's strong. Easter eggs are hidden well. Clear everything before attempting to find them. Okay. What do you think about the planetarium? The beautiful twinkling of the future that'll fade no matter what. All the rumors of the rubber are waiting for you. What does that mean? I think these are the ones put in by the... I think these are the ones put in by the, the translators. Let's play Kick the Can in the Dark. Just kidding. These still don't make any sense, though. On that blindingly bright day, on the very day of summer, somehow that doesn't work at all. I was just like, their notes for translating. He's not saying that out loud. And break the plus disc. Okay. So let's go up. Translation editions. Oh, that's at the. Oh, yeah, it literally is right there, huh? Okay. Well, with that said, we have one final scene, I guess. And that scene is if we go to options, we go to graphics mode, we go to contribution illustration, where remember we went through these before, and there's nothing here that's bad, so I don't got to worry. But if we go to the very last one, special story, Drinking Dreaming Moon. Here we go. Arihiko! Toto, you bastard! The man's scream split the dark, engulfing the city's streets. Arihiko, running by my side, was sent flying by one of one merciless punch from Arkuid. She'd taken advantage of that one instance opening earlier, where Ar Akiha's hair had shot past us. Even though I glanced at my lost friend, I couldn't stop moving. What is this battle royale? What is going on? My true friend, always by my side throughout this running battle, has finally died. Don't just kill- don't just kill me off, but your sacrifice won't be in vain, Arihiko. Wiping tears from my eyes and pretending to, I ran faster. I can't let myself be caught by them here. If I am, then it'll be like everything else. There's already too much love comedy crap. I won't take any more of this. I'm gonna sit down and have a nice quiet cup of tea on the veranda. I will. I wanna have one day, all day, to just sit quietly around trimming my bonsai. For that goal, even if it costs me everything, I just need to escape those girls. But I've already lost my hiding place at the Inui house and lost my human shield as well. Even so, I keep running. My will is firm. Damn it! It's the festival disc, they say, as if that's a reason to go crazy. Even while cursing, I didn't pause in my surveillance of the surroundings. For the moment, I did not see anyone. I, Tonoshiki, dropped limply. My body felt heavy and my heart beat like mad. All the fatigue from running all having run all the way here from town pressed down on my heart. 
My surroundings were quiet, but I could feel my own labored breath crushing that silence. I looked around again. Now I was looking, I could see that I was back on the Tono Estates. There was a small plaza near the edge of the Tono Mansion grounds. Without thinking, I came running to this place, filled with the memories of my childhood. The winds of autumn blew lightly past me. Looking up while trying to catch my breath, I saw the perfect circle of the full moon sketched against the night. The light filtered through the trees, casting specks on the ground. The season is already autumn. While some traces of summer remain, preparations for winter have already begun. A melancholic season. Those festival days have finally begun to flicker in the shadows of their ending. Drinking Dreaming Moon. I do like how the, the game feels very summer, and then as you get to the final scenes, it's like the end of summer, and now it's summer's over. It's autumn, right? I like that. After another look around me, I sighed. It seems that somehow I managed to conceal myself from those five. I leaned slowly against a tree. There, I took a brief rest. Soon they'll come. But before that happens, I have to recover some of my strength. What the hell's with that neck short story? Just remembering the script's contents made my head hurt. No matter what, I've got to escape that. I put one hand on my chest, closed my eyes, and took deep breaths. Doing so, I remember the girls as they were just a while ago. Flashback? All right. Having stripped off and thrown away the costume from the previous short story, but for some reason keeping the cat ears as on as she drew close, Arkuid. Blocking Arkuid's path as if to protect me, CL Senpai. Ah, she's alright, I thought for a moment, then I noticed she was holding that dangerous weapon called the Gospel According to Thomas or something. Whether she was joking or whether she was completely serious, with her there's no telling. Even more incomprehensible was Akiha. For some reason, she was wearing a skimpy bikini. Looks like some sort of cosplay, but I have no idea which one. If I knew which one, I could at least plan countermeasures. Then, spurring on the confusion, were two Hisuis. Of course, one of them was a real Hisui, and the other was Kohaku-san in disguise. In the past, it was sometimes possible to tell them apart, but not anymore. Both their disguises and their insides. Hisui was becoming more like Kohaku-san, and Kohaku-san was also starting to show her feelings clearly. Normally, this would be a good thing, but not in these circumstances. No way I could I be happy about this. Even worse, they've both been cooking. Probably, that's the joke. Dangerous. Way too dangerous. At the sudden awareness of a danger far greater than fighting that rages in the city, I began to shiver. You two, do you really both want to be here when that much? Unconsciously, I shouted. When I did, the two girls grew closer, drew closer. Hurriedly, I shut my mouth. There's ten knights in total, so wouldn't it be fine to have two stories each? No matter how much poison I spew in my heart, the situation won't improve one bit. Arihiko, trade with me. Without thinking, I begged for help from my best friend who had gone to heaven during that earlier battle downtown. Of course, it didn't help. That punk. He should have been just a better shield for me. Automatically, I started complaining about that friend. But no. That didn't improve things one bit either. I've really got to start thinking seriously about my next escape route now. I can't use Arihiko's house anymore. Because I just fled from the city, the school buildings might be an unexpected good place. However, under this brilliant moon, it'd be impossible to use any route to the school. What can I do? Should I believe that hide-in-plain-sight cliché and try to hide right here? But there are multiple people here with animal-like instincts, so I should try to come up with a real plan. Wrestle. A sound. Crap! Cheeky! No! An instant's delay in judgment was fatal. Still wearing the cat ears and acting very happy, Arquid dove at me from the side. Damn! I attempted to twist aside, but my tired body wouldn't move as I wished. Thunk, thunk. Just before Arkwood's hands reached me, a scripture drove between us as if to ward off her hands. It brushed my hair as it passed by, and for some reason I got a whiff of something burning. Right after, a dark shadow dropped before my eyes, facing Arkwood. Senpai. Or Senpai. Tonokun, I'll be a minute, okay? For just a second, she flashed a smile at me. Senpai was incredibly beautiful. It's just that that smile shouldn't go with the weapon she was holding. I automatically took a step back. After that, we can take our time, right? Or are they all drunk? Saying only that, she slowly turned her face towards Arkwit. Her pink tongue slowly slid across her upper lip. Senpai, there's no porn allowed right now. During my distraction, I'd taken one step, then another back. I glanced to the sides. Unfortunately, there was only one path left open for me. Nothing to do but flee towards the mansion. Summoning my strength, I ran off as fast as I could. Shikisama. My body, which had started to flee again, instantly froze. I heard two of Hisui's voice in perfect harmony. I couldn't help but sigh. I didn't want to look, but I still turned in that direction. Sure enough, two Hisui's stood there. Furthermore, each of them was holding forth a platter overflowing with strange things that were definitely not food. Should I run? No, of course I'll run, but where to? 
boom, bam, screech from behind me as if to mimic my thoughts came the disturbing sounds of battle. The Hisuis took another step, closing the distance. Sliding forward, they came. Pushed back by their spirit, I slowly backpedaled. Thump. My back ran into a tree. I couldn't retreat anymore. Stop, Hisui. Stop making those eyes. Or rather, both of you, please stop looking at me like that. Do I really have to eat that? If I eat, you'll stop, right? If I eat... I finally surrendered. But somehow, having it turn out like this gave a somewhat refreshing feeling. I don't have to run anymore. I could just take a nice nap. Actually, just fainting, though. Those thoughts fogged my mind. But... What are you doing to my knee, son? I heard Akia's voice from above. Next, a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt? Nee, son, you idiot. Lightning bolt? Lightning bolt? As my consciousness faded, the last thing I saw was a demon girl wearing a tiger stripe bikini. So that was your cosplay, huh? Oh, she's, uh, Urusa Yatsura. That's getting a new anime that looks incredible. Black smoke popped from my lips and I collapsed. Uh, sadly, there was no sprite of that, huh? She's Lum, the invader girl. Huh? I woke up in the same place. A dream? Don't tell me it was all a dream. Me and that stupid cliche. I shook my head in amazement. I look around and revealed no signs of anyone else, just me sitting in the middle of a clearing. Seems like I fell asleep during a rest break. I don't run, I thought, but because of the weirdness permeating my body, it would just be too much trouble to move. I looked up at the moon. Ah, the moon shining as beautifully as always. Light gusts of wind coolly caressed my face and rustled the leaves of the trees. I don't know why, but my heart felt calm. It's already been a full month since the start of the festival period in mid-August. Ever since then, I don't think there's... I don't think there's been a time I felt this restful at my heart. There's just been one crazy event after another. Amidst this quiet, those days seem so very distant. It's not that I dislike that sort of tumult. Arkwood's innocence, Akia's jealousy, Seal Senpai's kindness, Koakusan's smile, Hisui's dedication. I love them all, and I think they love me as well, but... But just a little... Yo, yo, Shiki, what are you doing here? No, the others today? A familiar voice reached my ears. I opened my eyes and looked straight ahead at the edge of the clearing. There stood a whoa, a one-time murderer. Whoa. Oh, okay, calmly standing there. A long, long hair and an archaic kimono-like clothes waving in the breeze. Interesting. Oh, it's you, huh? Somehow the moon just seems so inviting. I thought I'd sit here and treat myself to watching the moon. That wasn't the real reason, but to try to be witty, that's what I said. That's right. Today there really is a nice moon. Really, it'd be terrible to waste a night like this. He looked up at the sky while he spoke, then narrowed his eyes. Is this... Shiki? You don't smell of blood today, I said, looking at him. Idiot, it's not that I'm always killing things, he chuckled softly. Kimono fluttering, he slowly walked closer. This was someone I should be wary of. But for some reason, I just didn't feel that way. And quit it with that it's you stuff, will ya? After I took all the trouble to come see you today. Finally, his feet stopped. He'd arrived before me. Something was different about him, I realized. Ah, sorry. I'm glad to see you. Me too. Glad that you're looking good, Shiki. Finished with the courtesies, he sat heavily. Are we having another sit-down moment with, uh, grabbing drinks? Hey man, that's one depressed- that's one depressed mug you're wearing. He said that with a little smile gazing into my face. You want some too? This time he- yeah, he held out a bottle and two cups. His expression changed to a full smile. Yeah, I'll have some. A drink to the moon might be just the thing. Drinking isn't really my thing, but for some reason today I felt like joining in. Oh, you said it. He handed a cup to me, then began pouring. Blub, blub, blub. Thanks. Now let me. Taking the bottle, I filled his cup this time. Don't spill any. Strangely stingy. Was it like this back when, too? Unintentionally, I smiled amusedly. Disturbing punk, ain't ya? No, oh, that's enough. Man, really, don't spill any. I righted the bottle and capped it. Placing it to the side, I took my cup. Then, shall we toast? Rolling his eyes like a child, he asked. Oh, that was him. Sounds good. What do we toast to? To you and me. As he spoke, his eyes narrowed in amusement again. A truly gentle smile. Am I smiling like that too, I wonder? To childhood friends. To true friends. 
Cheers, Clink. We touched cups. A reunion. That's right. It is a reunion. A little reunion ritual between two young men that parted eight years ago. I'm really glad to see you again. I'm really glad to sh see you again, Shiki. Hmm. That reminds me, Quietly spoke up. We used to play here a lot. Nostalgically smiling, he looked around. Here and there, this place was full of memories. The cherry blossoms of spring, the heat of the summer, the falling leaves of autumn, the snows of winter too. Together with him, Akia, and Hisui, there were so many memories of the four of us here. Opening half-closed eyes, he turned towards me. Hey, what? Is everyone doing okay? Everyone. Me, Akia, Hisui. Probably Kohaku-san too. With a smile, I answered. Akia has become more cheerful. <laughs> Lately, you know, for better or worse, she's gotten some friends her own age. Always yelling at each other. That's a first for her, right? So, she's made some friends. That's great, Shiki. He reached out one arm and smacked me bam-bam on the shoulder. Ow, ow, ow. Hisui, well... Hisui, too, she's become a bit more cheerful. That's good. I always wanted her to smile brightly. This time he gave a satisfied smile. I poured more sake into his cup. Her blushing, smiling face is really cute. Ho ho! Oh no, that was the other way around. Never mind, it's so tough to tell sometimes. Eyes heavy with meaning glanced at me. His elbow poked me a couple of times. <clears throat> Kohaku-san. Deliberately, I cleared my throat. Kohaku. His eyes were utterly serious. She's starting to smile. When he heard that, his expression collapsed. With a large nod, he pushed his face into his hands and gave a great sigh. I see, I see, I see. His voice was loud and happy, and he nodded repeatedly. Are you that attached to Kohaku-san? Reacting to my question, he opened one eye and looked this way. A smile floated around his lips. Me? To Kohaku? Yeah, that's how it looks. Yeah, that may be true. Parent and child, we... Wait. Parent and child? Oh, I see. Okay, I see. Okay, I was I was like, whoa, wait, is this Maki? He's, no, it's not. Nobody's saying parent and child. We both caused her all sorts of hell. Of course, I'd be attached to her. He finished his words with a chuckle deep in his throat. I don't like the implications. By the way, what are the white thing and black things I've seen going in and out of the house? White thing and black thing? I thought for a moment. White, white, white. I remember the cat ears. Black, black, black. The image of giant and... Really dangerous weapon floated into my brain. Oh, Arquid and Seal Senpai, you mean? Yeah, I think those were their names. I thought so. I thought for a bit. I wonder what he's asking. Vampire? Vampire hunter? Nah, that's not what he means. Important friends. Mine and Akiha's. Mentioned them earlier, didn't I? As if satisfied by something, he nodded repeatedly. So, friends and rivals like that, huh? Rivals? Why rivals? You're always like that, Shiki. He gave an exaggerated sigh. Anyway, you guys are living happily, right? Yeah, it is like that, I guess. I thought about his own situation and my heart hurt. But he didn't say even a single resentful word. I'm glad. I'm really glad. Just like that, he nodded. Hey, hmm? Sorry. What for? He poured himself some more sake. Before we talked... About old friends, right? Oh, that. The image of him drinking coffee and talking about old times overlaid his current image. That's right. I remember talking about that once. Yeah. That guy, how to say it? He never had anything of his own, so he looked like he never wanted anything. That was a terribly aloof. Although aloof is just another name for lonely. That's why I couldn't help but worry about him. I think he said something like that. That. I was wrong. Sorry. He gave an embarrassed laugh. However, now I was thinking. Where exactly was he wrong? Why? Idiot. Think about that yourself. Again, he chuckled. I remembered he's always been like this. He never was the type to give you everything. That's why I always liked him. Blub, blub, blub. I realized he was pouring more sake into my cup. I refilled his cup, too. Give me a hint, at least. Yeah, somehow this hot sake just hits the spot. Hmm. Okay, then. It's me. Huh? Think of the rest of yourself. 
Laughing, he put his cup down next to him and lay flat on the ground. I, too, quaffed the contents of my cup and put it aside and lay down. In my flushed body, the ground felt pleasant. Under my back came the rustling of early fallen leaves. Ah, I could hear my own sigh echoing around me. Looking up, the whole wide starry sky. What's with you? That's depressing. He laughed. <laughs> I, too, started laughing. Why, I don't know, it was, it was funny to me. Together, lay down, we laughed. Don't know why, but just couldn't stop. Why are you laughing? <laughs> You're laughing too. For a little while, we just kept laughing like that. How much time passed, I wonder. Eventually, our laughter paused. A pleasant tiredness and a kind of ennui. Hey, a voice. A serious voice, unlike any before. What? That's you, my voice sharpened too. I wonder what he's going to say. Don't... Don't worry about it anymore. Those... were the words I least wanted to hear. Stop. Why? This was... Don't say anything more. Why not? Rather, he was... Just my... Dream, right? Dream. My dream. A product of my mind. Oh, okay, I was going to say, I was wondering how this is going to work. Yep, there we go. A convenient phantom. Of an impossible long-lost past. Of a present that can't be wiped away. And of a future that could never come to be. A future I'd closed off with my own hands. Why do you think that? He was still chuckling. Why, huh? That's because... Because you're trying to cheer me up. That's right. That's what he's doing. Because you're not the you I know. Him from eight years ago, maybe. But the present him is not someone to speak kind words to me. Because he's an unabashed, <laughs> unabashed mass murderer. He can't accept that the current me is a butcher? Tell the truth, no. Can't even think of me as... As a ghost whose sanity returned when he died. He gave a twisted smile. Holding one hand to his eyes, the other in front of him, he laughed. Still so young, yet so ingenuous... Just normal, I think. Normal. This should be normal. No matter how much you'd call it self-defense, then that the person whose future we sealed with my hands would say to me, don't worry about it. If this isn't some convenient dream, then just what is it? Okay, then. How about this? He sat up and looked down at me. What do you think of the world? The world? Yeah. Do you think reality is wonderful? Or, or, or do you think that there's no proof that this actually exists? Reality, huh? The everyday world I live in. Can I really prove that it actually exists? And if everything were an illusion, that what I really think that it, what I think is reality would be, in truth be a hallucination and quite distant from true reality. Is what I see with my eyes reality? Is what I hear with my ears reality? Or maybe no one can prove that reality is reality. Or no one can prove that reality is reality. Well said. In other words, the world exists inside of people. Understand so far? I nodded, my gaze still pointing to the sky. By the way, do you dislike Buddhism? I don't dislike it. Don't dislike it, but don't particularly like it either. Modern Japanese don't usually think about religion much, as long as it doesn't hurt them, right? Not that it matters. The Buddhists have a saying. All things are first in the mind. As the foundations of the mind then come from the mind. In other words... All worlds exist only in your mind. The world only exists in my mi in the mind. The world, people, and everything else are in your mind. That means what I'm seeing and hearing is just all a product of my imagination? That's right. It's a good thing you're smart. Added to sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, the five awarenesses that rule the human, f the physical human five senses and the surface human consciousness and the deeper mentalities of manas and or self-awareness and alaya the root of consciousness those eight mental functions form everything in the world or so they say unfamiliar words ask for an explanation manas alaya yeah those two are the so-called deep mentalities manas is a subconscious that influences the surface consciousness that stream of consciousness thing alaya is yeah it's the source the root source yeah Everything that's ever happened to that human. Things seen and heard, a gathering, collection of all of those. 
It's the thing that provides Im impetus, motive, to the other seven mental functions. To sum it up in one word, it's the act. Act. Of course, those eight functions don't have a fixed shape. They interfere with each other, and each situation shapes the ones after it. Right then, something seemed to flicker in my heart. If one's heart is formed like that, then... Inversion impulse. The thing that inverted him was his own... That's right, Shiki. What was inverted in my heart was, most likely, a Laya. His root? Inverted Laya. Inverted axe. The remaining seven unchanged, only their impetus inverted. And those seven were dragged along. Of all those mental functions, all of those mental functions form the next act. And that act was, well, for him, there was no going back. I see. You understand? Yeah. I understand both this world and you. But I still don't know if you're the real you. I understand that everything might be a dream. I understand what happened to him, too. But I still don't understand why this present him would appear. Even if he is the real thing, should he still be that murderer? Damn, you are slow. He ran his hands through his hair, and he gave a single sigh. Did you forget about your own eyes? Eyes. The mystic eyes of death perception. Those eyes that can see fate, especially a fated death, and the power to substantiate the final result. Eyes that see death won't do anything, right? Your eyes are... Oh. Eyes that see death won't see anything, right? If your eyes were truly the, eye, the mystic eyes of death perception, then yeah, that'd be true. He closed one eye, then looked at me. Have you ever thought that? Makes sense, doesn't it? Opening his closed eye, he waved his hands and stood. Because you are your eyes, and because you've been exposed to death for so long, you've gained the ability to substantiate the very concept of death. Whoa, okay. Because of that exposure to death, the me that is my eyes can understand death? In other words, my eyes aren't strictly the mystic eyes of death perception? Yeah. Come on, you've seen Akia's hair, right? Akia's hair, the hair that can absorb anything. That crimson, far deeper than merely red crimson hair. Yeah, I've seen it. Your eyes were originally eyes like that. That's something you should be saying, though. Oh! So... Interesting. He slowly turned around, his expression tightened, and his eyes shone unhesitantly. Seeing him like that, I was overcome with shock. You're talking a lot today, I finally muttered. He gave a twisted smile. With a great exaggerated waving of arms and body, he dropped into a begging pose. This is just your convenient dream, right? Let me do what I want. That's right. Unconsciously, my own face relaxed. What do I think I'm doing getting this involved in a dream? Anyways, if your eyes aren't those eyes, then... You might be able to understand the concept of me as well as what I'm saying. Understanding came to me. And the me you know is from which time? I could feel my complexly tied up thoughts beginning to unravel. So that's it. I knew my face was smiling. Probably the you from eight years ago. Right. That's exactly it. And the... Th and the that me! Frick, this... Oh man. The translation here with this like... Final... Like with this uh... The OVA from, um, not the OVA, but like the last sort of movie thing from Garden of Sinners. Like, this is what this is going into. And it's like, it's so deep and so, so much. That plus the translation being slightly off is making this very difficult to understand what's going on. That's exactly it. And the me that you met before had as a base. I already knew that answer. The concept of you that I was predicting? Correct. I am Shiki. Without doubt, I am Tono Shiki, Shiki. I am the Shiki that was born from Shiki. Shut up! I hate this! The human called forth for my Tono Shiki's mentality. That's what he is. This is, this is the worst thing I've ever read. So he's saying... That's why, Shiki. He closed his eyes. Then he put a hand on his hip and turned his face to the sky. Took a deep breath and smiled. An amazing smile. The memories of those days began to stir in my mind. If we assume that this is convenient for you, then, slowly his eyes opened, eyes filled with a strong will. I have an inverted, right? Yeah. If this isn't just a dream, that is. What a picky guy you are. Behind those words, he was laughing amusedly. I wonder what sort of face I'm making anyway. I sat up, and like that, leaned against the adjacent trees. Anyway, since you can't tell which it is, why not go with the way it's more that's more fun? 
That's just the way you are, but you know... He stopped short there. For a little while, he was wordless. Should he say it or not? Probably something like that. The Shiki that would want to see you, well... That'd be me, right? A little embarrassedly, he smiled. A bit of a mysterious and amiable smile. He conformed to his smiles from the distant, distant golden days. I looked at that smile. Clumsily, I... It's not something to cry about, you know. Let the tears flow. Was I sad? Of course. Was I happy? Of course. Why? Because this is what I wanted. Even if it's just a dream? Of course. Because even when I lost this, I couldn't cry. Why are you crying? <laughs> even while crying, I was laughing. I couldn't control my own heart. One after another, the tears overflowed. I raised my head and wiped away the tears with my hand. I realized that he too was hiding his face. Aren't you crying too? Face hidden, he didn't answer. His long hair was waving oddly. His shoulders too were shaking a little. Drip. Shining in the moonlight, a single drop fell. He wiped away tears with his hand and looked back at me. <laughs> and we're laughing. We laughed. For a long, long time we laughed. But at the same time, the tears kept flowing. There was probably only one reason for the tears. The tears should have flowed long ago. For him when he killed me. For me when he died. And strangely, the two of us that should have been parted by death were here face to face. Just earnestly laughing, crying, and then, and then. Amidst my many jumbled feelings, I could no longer understand anything. There was one reason for the tears, but there were countless other feelings intervening. But... I think that was the relief I had longed for after such a long, long time. The two of us right now must have looked laughable to other people's eyes. But that doesn't matter. The truth about people tends to be shameful after all. A hallucination, a dream, even if it's laughable. Because I've finally found the truth. Hmm. And that's how I finally cried for his death. I realized that at some point the moon had almost disappeared from the sky. Seems like we spent a long time talking. The moon. Yeah. We stood up looking at the moon. It's about time for me to go. And he spoke. As he spoke, he walked to my side. Along the way, he glanced in the sake bottle he was holding. It was like it was empty since he quickly lost interest in it. Placed it at, uh, since he quickly lost interest in it, placed it at his feet. Finally, may I ask one thing? Oh, it was him. And usually for him, he asked discreetly. Since I had no reason to refuse, I agreed. Sure. What? The last time we met, you said that it wasn't us that were twisted, but the world that was twisted, but... Yeah. That did happen. Although that time I was Nanaya, and I think I was mostly being dragged along by his consciousness that I was bound to. But I do remember the conversation about the world being twisted in some comparison to German boxer dogs. I don't remember that. What do you yourself think, Tonoshiki? I was a little surprised. Probably he's realized it too. Nah, given that this was him, he'd obviously understand. Why? Well, that's because he's my friend. I... The answer was obvious. Back then, we were the ones that were twisted. Why? Because right now, we're the boxers. People can't accept survival of the fittest. I believe that. All lives are equal, and I believe in the right of people to live. However, in the real world, it's sad, but the survival of the fittest attitude prevails. To escape that strife, people form groups. Of course, that's not the only reason people gather. Because being by yourself is lonely. Sheep have herds. Once there was a wolf that wanted to make friends with the sheep. To do so, the wolf had to obey the rules of the herd. If the wolf should follow the rules of the wolves, well, amongst the sh herds of sheep, then, well, the herd itself would collapse, and that wolf, in the end, would not be able to befriend the sheep. However, even should the wolf join the herd of sheep, it should never doubt that it has fangs. To try to live while denying its own fangs would be nonsense, because the sheep accepted the wolf. So the wolf needs to obey the rules of the sheep. Should it sharpen its fangs? Should it not sharpen its fangs? Should it be forbidden to fight with other wolves? Those were things for the sheep to decide. Eventually. There was a German boxer hound. The boxer wanted to be friends with the sheep. Something like that. There was no way for the sheep to become boxers. Why? Because a taste of conflict or dislike of it is natural born from many situations. Is nature born. 
Besides, my eyes are an inherently furnished power, just like the wolf's fangs. My... No, we... What group is it that we wish to belong to? No need to ask. That precious family waiting for me on the Tono Estates. That rambunctious and innocent princess. That gently smiling senpai. And those boisterous common every day. That boisterous common every day and the people in it. I fought with vampires, so has that group rejected me? No, it hasn't. I want to be part of that group. I wish to be a part of that world. And so I... So, after all, you won't come with us, Tonokun. Is that right? Oh! Oh! Oh my god. I was gonna say, he wouldn't say Tonokun, so after all, you won't come with us, Tonokun. Is that right, Yumizuka? Dang. That's it, that's great. Or, that's it, that's great, he smacked my shoulder. You should always stay back there. Don't show up in this place like we did. Oh, we're in heaven. Or rather, we're in the afterlife because we can see it with our eyes. And this is basically them saying, like, No, don't be here. You have a whole life ahead of you. I see. He was thrilled from the bottom of his heart. Why can he smile like that? Why is he trying to help me so much? Those words, so serious as to almost make me doubt. You should stay there and always protect everyone, in place of me who can't. That's right. By all means, I will, for everyone, for him, and for my own life. That guy, how to say it, he never had anything of his own. So he looked like he never wanted anything. I was uh, terribly aloof, although aloof is just another name for lonely. That's why I couldn't help but worry about him. That's wrong. I don't know about back then, but now it's wrong. And now I can say so. You got it? I got it, I got it, Cheeky. At his words, I nodded. That's the answer he was aiming for, isn't it? Even though it was never spoken, there's no doubt that sure is the answer he wanted me to find. Not logic, it's a person's wishes. It's a person's will to live. Then fine. As he spoke, he wiped my face with the sleeve of his kimono. Don't cause so much trouble, Shiki. His face was calm. It's time. I've got to go, he said regretfully. He straightened up and smoothed out his kimono. Can't stay a bit longer? I want to talk just a bit more. Nope. Can't you hear? The voice is calling for you to awaken. He posed with a hand cupping his ear. No good. I can't hear anything. When I mentioned that, he just smiled. But in the end, all this... Is this all a dream? Don't get so worked up about it. He was amused. But only I can hear that voice, so it could be a lie, you know. Oh, that was him. Ha ha ha, he laughed. What a punk. Well, I'm going. Later! Tossing off a short farewell, he casually walked out of the clearing. I almost chased him, but I didn't. For some reason, my very drowsy body wouldn't move. Will we meet again? I can only manage a strange voice. Who knows, won't we? He didn't turn around. If this is a dream, then we can meet again soon. But if this is real, then you'll have to wait until you die. Oh, that was him again. Okay. I was growing sleepier by the moment. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man, I'll give you a big hint. A hint? Couldn't even keep my eyes open anymore. My consciousness was fading fast. His voice was growing distant. Yeah. I talked about Buddhism earlier, right? The official title of that, Yui Shiki, which means there's nothing but the mind. Did you know that? Can't answer, huh? Ah, oh, well. Then a gift. I've got a message for you. Bye bye Tonokun. Thank you, and see you again someday. I'm glad I could drink with you, then. Well, I'll be praying that we meet again, you know? That was a message from Yumizuka, huh? Dang. Okay, so you pretty much have to decide whether that was reality or if that was a dream. I think that was reality. I think that that they wouldn't make you question it. In a game full of dreams, they wouldn't make you question it if it wasn't. Nissan, Nissan. It's already Kiyosama. He's just sleeping. My Shiki wouldn't die. My, Tonokun doesn't belong to you. 
Uh, he's awakening. What can you tell, Grumble Grumble? It was all my awakening self could do to understand Akia's words. No matter how kick-ass I am, stuck in the middle of five noisy people, I'll wake up. Vaguely, I opened my eyes. Right after, I caught sight of my surroundings. It's all right, Akiha. It's nothing. Yawn. Oh, that no, that's him. I gave a great yawn and stretched. I will say again, sometimes it's really tough to tell who's speaking. It looks like I'd fallen asleep sitting against a tree. Oh my god, I'm so happy that every visual novel after this has voice acting. Surrounding me stood five women. Akiha, arms crossed in front of her. That's not what she's doing, frantically looking worried. The winds ruffled her pale clothing that matched the early autumn. Facing me and struggling impatiently was Arkwood, as noisy as ever. Holding back that Arkwood with great effort was Seal Senpai. She is truly a martyr. Kisui was kneeling by my side, asking how I felt. That consent- Oh, conscientiousness made me happy. Kawaku-san, after smiling brightly at me, tucked back the sleeves of her kimono and began tidying up a sake bottle in two cups that had fallen nearby. Oh, it's super real. What a perceptive person she is. Like this, running away again would be too much trouble. Isn't that wrong? No, it's too much trouble. It's that here now is where I should be. Kiha. A worried face. I noticed that unusual change that the usual wouldn't have seen. I slowly stood. Akiha. I walked closer and placed a hand on her head. Nissan. Red-faced, her eyes widened my unexpected action. I made you worry, huh? I'm alright, so don't look like that. Isn't your beauty going to waste like that? I, I wasn't worried about anything, Nissan. Puffing out her cheeks, she pouted. Is that right? Even while I said that, I started patting her head. Uh, she was dumbstruck. Is he gonna be smooth? Is he gonna be smooth to all of them and the others? There are others I'd cause trouble for. Giving Akia a last smile, I turned to Hisui. Looks like it caused more trouble for you, Hisui. It was nothing. That's for always helping me, Hisui. I'm grateful. Huh? Blushing, Hisui turned her face away. Did I say something strange? Hey, hey, Shiki-san, you're embarrassing Hisui-chan. Kawaku-san spoke up to help Hisui. Embarrassing? Yes. Are you still half asleep? Kawaku-san's eyebrows drew together as she pointed. Something weird is happening. No way, just delivering a little message. Did you have an unusual dream? Dream? Dream. That's right. I did have some sort of very important dream, I think. I can't remember. Hmm. It was something. I think I met someone in that dream? Probably. I dreamt. Was it a pleasant dream? She smiled brightly. A dream image as warm as her smiling face. Yeah, a good dream. Confidently, I answered. Thank her. Thanks, Kawaku-san. Huh? Why am I thanking her? Huh? At the same time she spoke, I looked and saw a single tear on her cheek. Oh. Her expression was a usual smile. Of course, it wasn't a fake smile like it once was. What's wrong with me? She pulled out a handkerchief and wiped away her tears. Then she held her hands to her chest and thought, I think I almost remember something, but... She shook her head. But her expression seemed to show that she couldn't remember. But in response to that smile... No, it's because of that smile that she has those tears. I realized. In the corner of her eyes, more tears glittered. Shiki, you're a little weird. Yes, you are. Arkwit and Seal Senpai spoke. What's that, Arkwit, all of a sudden? Senpai, too? I spoke unhappily. But I wasn't actually upset. And I started chuckling. See? I see. Arkwood pointed at me and Seal Senpai put a hand to her cheek a little confused. And a greeting for them too. Isn't it all right to be strange? I'll be counting on you two from now on too. Right about then I began to understand myself. There was something in my mind and it was causing me to do something. But I felt no discomfort. Just a little like that earlier dream, a warm feeling. But it was quickly falling apart. Soon it would return to being buried deep inside me. Hmm. Then, anyway, smirk, they smiled. Shall we begin with the consecration? Or should we hit him with those scriptures of yours? Wait, wait, what do you two think you're doing to me? What? Well, you know, right. This is bad. It's no good. 
I take back what I said. I decide to flee. Arkwin and CL Senpai continue to discuss something. I wouldn't have another chance. At great speed, I ran off. Full power, I ran without looking back. I paid no attention to the rattling noises coming from behind me. If you got time to worry about that, then run, Tonoshiki. Shouting to myself, I ran. The autumn winds felt good on my cheeks. My shoulders cut the wind. The leaves of the trees flowed through my sight. Through the leaves, I could see the stars twinkle, foretelling the imminent coming of dawn. Not that I'm going to get away. It may be meaningless, but... Just that this is my world, I think. Even if it's nothing amazing, I'm happy. Really happy. Isn't it? Yeah. From my heart, I really think so. So I told that thing in my mind. Yeah, that's his connection with Shiki, right? The other Shiki, right? Not Nanaya, but the other Shiki. Some place, some when. Hello? What's this? Two people stood watching the distant scenery. One was a young man wearing. Oh, okay. They're watching from heaven. One was a young man wearing something like a kimono. The other was a girl wearing a typical high school uniform. Was that message good enough? Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, was that message good enough? Yep, thank you, Tono-san. In the scenery they were looking down on was the shape of their young friend still being chased. I quit it! But that idiot. In the end, he still thought I was just a dream. A twisted smile floated across the young man's face. He looked a little annoyed. You're just content with being seen. Someone like me. Looking at him, she spoke reproachfully. Puffing out her cheeks, she looks discontentedly up at the young man. So, I guess that Shiki's consciousness was enough to see you. Interesting. To see someone that shouldn't be there, some sort of information is necessary. Why? Because it's unnecessary, it's necessary for the other senses to compensate for the information that should have been originally belonged to the five bodily senses. Yeah, just two days. Holding a hand to the heart in a reminiscing gesture. Just what was going through that heart? Chagrin? Regret? Sorrow? From the Lantern Festival up till today, I tried so hard. A ghost, huh? How inconvenient. Oh, never mind. That's the young man, earnestly muttered. But it's alright, because I'll always be waiting here. Surprisingly, her face was clear when she raised it again. On her face was a smile lively enough to make one feel that way. Is that so? Convenient, then, being a ghost? The young man laughed in satisfaction. His last worry was resolved. Should you be laughing there? She pointed out with cool seriousness. I heard you were a ladylike young woman, but... He said a bit embarrassedly. She teasingly laughed. And just where was I mistaken? Huh. Oh, just where... The frick, I hate this. Just where was I mistaken, huh? He regretfully sighed. Probably from the beginning. She said with another laugh, then looked once more to the world below. He nodded and also looked down. For some reason, the two of them seemed to be having fun. Well, next time be more careful, okay? Yes, I certainly will. Next time, huh? Next time, huh? Next time, huh? I'm... I'm, like, really sh Okay, so one. Now it makes total sense why, like, you needed to see every scene to get to this one because you needed to see the one with, uh, popping the flowers down for her. But at the same time, it's like... I don't know. I'm surprised that they just let her die, right? And just, that's just like a, I mean, I guess though, it is, it is unavoidable. Cause she died on, she died in like every route in the original. So you couldn't really avoid that. The only thing she didn't die in was, it was the manga, the anime, right? They found a way to write around that. Well, looks like we're going to need to, uh, Oh, that was good. That was good, though. I enjoyed that. That was that was way deeper than I thought it would be. Um, okay, there was a thing that I saw that said if you click on the type moon that you get extra scenes, but that's like super fake, huh? Um, and I kept clicking on it secretly while I was playing to see if that actually was the thing, and it's super not. Well, okay, that is Kagetsu Toya done. It's, uh... I'm going to say it, it's a little disappointing in the translation department. It definitely made it very difficult to get through and understand what's going on sometimes. Uh, definitely rough, much like the Tsukihime manga, where it's like, it's cool stuff kind of masked by the fact it's a ancient 
fan translation that's not even really complete. But otherwise, I had a good time with it. Good time with more of the characters, more random scenarios, more fun stories, right? And I really do like these characters. I'm going to say, in total, I think Fate and then Hollow Ataraxia is a better combo than Tsukihime and Kugetsu Toya. I don't know. I think that the dream trope stuff was a little... I'm not going to say bad, but it was a little tropey, right? But otherwise, I still enjoyed my time quite a bit. I definitely did. So, the next visual novel that we have for uh, the, the Nasuverse is going to be Mahoyo, which, oh my god, I'm going to be able to go into a store and buy in English. Holy crap. I know that the uh, Tsukihime remake fan translation is not far long gone. It's going to be coming out pretty soon. However, I'm going to stay away from that. Uh, just a little bit for a couple reasons. One, in case they do announce with like Tsukihime Remake 2, they're going to be like, oh, by the way, we're releasing them all in English. That could happen. Uh, the other thing is I want to make sure that my friends can play it and check that that fan translation is all good. Right? Make sure that it's it's uh, well done. And finally, because because it comes after Mahoyo, there might be some stuff that ties into it. So I do want to go through Mahoyo first regardless, right? Going in release order is the better choice pretty much always. So regardless, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, oh boy, I'm going to have to edit this one down quite a bit. You know, get, get, get all that, that editing of the first part done. But otherwise, thank you all for watching. And I had a good time. And we'll see you next time with another visual novel in the future. Ciao, guys.